Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about three ways to calculate work done by the force of gravity on an inclined plane. We have a truck of mass 10,000 kilograms moving up an incline of length 100 meters. The angle of inclination is 30 degrees. Method one, we're going to consider the parallel component of the force of gravity as the truck goes up the incline. The parallel component of gravity acts downwards, so it's acting in the opposite direction of motion. What angle do you think this component of gravity acts at relative to the motion? We'll talk about that later, okay? So, we've got a formula that says W equals F delta X cos theta. The F in this case represents the component of gravity, it's the FG parallel. That is the force that is doing the work on the object, okay? So it will be a wise thing to calculate this force of gravity or this component of gravity separately. Why? Because there are going to be two thetas that are going to be given in the formulas. We don't want to confuse ourselves. The, ang the sine theta relates to the angle of inclination. The cos theta in the formula is to do with the direction of motion. So these two thetas are different. Okay, so don't confuse them. So it is important to calculate the FG parallel on the side and then come replace it in the formula. So FG parallel is FG sine theta. 10,000 times 9,8 times the sine of 30, which is 49,000 newtons. So the component of gravity going down the slope is 49 thousand newtons okay I haven't done that now I can go to the formula the 49,000 x over a distance of 100 meters and then it's acting at an angle of 180 degrees to the direction of motion so the upward direction will be the zero degree direction measuring the angle anti-clockwise down the slope will be the 180 degrees Okay, that's how we got 180, cos of 180, to get a negative 4,9 times 10 to the power 6 joules. Okay, that is the first method. The second method is very much similar to the first, except that now we're not going to look at the component of gravity. We're going to imagine that the gravitational force acts vertically downwards as the truck goes up the incline. So as the truck is going up, the force of gravity now is acting vertically downwards. What do you think the angle of this force is relative to the direction of motion? We've already said that since the truck is going up the incline, that will be the zero degree direction. And we say if we measure the angles anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, what will be this angle? Okay, let's just construct this diagram like that. This angle here will be 60 degrees. How do I know that it's 60 degrees? By simply making a right angle triangle. If this is 30 degrees, then this angle must be 60 degrees using the idea of complementary angles. So, the force of gravity is acting at an angle of 180 plus 60, which is 240 degrees. Okay? The force of gravity is mg, is 98,000. Now I've got all the ingredients to feed into the formula. The cost 240, we saw where it came from, the 180 degrees plus 60. To give me negative 4,9 times 10 to the power 6 joules. Question, why is, that, why is it that we're getting a negative work value? If you remember what we've talked about in the previous video, you should be able to talk about positive and negative work. Okay, so that is the second method. We do not consider the component of gravity. Third method, we're going to use EP is equal to MGH. This formula is often used to calculate the potential energy of an object that is above the surface of the Earth. Um, the H represents the vertical displacement or the vertical position at which the object is above the ground 
So we're going to imagine that the truck is going to move vertically upwards. Okay? From the reference point, it moves vertical upwards. And in the process, it's going to cover a displacement of 50 meters upwards. So the formula for potential energy is actually a, a work formula. Okay? It's actually a work formula. Force times displacement. Okay. So the truck moves upwards. 50 meters so this approach you have to consider only the vertical height which is 50 meters okay so you're gonna say the work done is the force of gravity times the 50 meters times the cost of 180 and you get a negative 4,9 times 10 to the power 6 joules alternatively you could have just said EP is equal to M gh times the cos of 180 okay so because we have already discovered that this is actually the work formula mgh is actually work formula so there you go guys that is the three ways in which you can calculate the work done by the force of gravity at this point in time do not disappear it's time for practice so stick around and practice some questions and learn to apply these ideas on an inclined plane So, we've got a diagram of a 15 kg block sliding down from A to B. The vertical height given is 7 meters. The angle of inclination is 25 degrees. The box slides from rest. Draw a free body diagram showing all the forces that act on the box as it descends. We also asked to calculate that the total work done is 606,72. Calculate the magnitude of the frictional force. So at this time, at this juncture, you can pause the video and attempt the question. Once you've attempted the question, see how your answers compare. Okay. So 1.1, we are asked to draw a free body diagram. And I always encourage guys, whenever you're given an option, draw a free body diagram that helps you perform a calculation. The reason why you want to draw a free body diagram to begin with is so that you can be able to perform your calculation much easier. Okay? So, the first force that I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw the component of the weight that acts vertically downwards. Then I'm going to draw the frictional force. The frictional force always acts in the opposite direction of motion. So there's my frictional force, kinetic friction. Then I can put in the normal force acting perpendicular to the surface and being balanced by FG perpendicular or the perpendicular component of the weight. Once my diagram is like this, again, I know the object is moving along the plane. So the forces that are affecting the motion of this object are the FG parallel and the frictional force. That is the advantage of always adopting this approach of drawing components and then looking at the forces in the direction in which the object moves. And then you are able to easily identify which forces are affecting the motion. Okay, now 1.2, we are told about the total work done. So the work done by all these forces. So at this, at this point it is easier to quickly determine the direction of motion. So the direction of motion here is the zero degree direction and that is the 180 degree direction. Okay, so in this case you can easily see that the gravitational force is doing positive work. Okay, again remember in this case we are also given the vertical height. 
So instead of using FG parallel to calculate the work done by gravity, I might as well use the approach of just considering the vertical height. Okay? The vertical height. Um, when we introduced the idea of energy in the lower grades, we said the formula to calculate potential energy was EP is equal to MGH. Okay? This formula is very much similar to the one that says W equals F delta X cos theta. In the case of considering the vertical movement, the force will be the mg, the h will be the same as the delta x now, if you consider the vertical height, and then we can use the cos of theta. Okay? So, But since I've drawn this diagram, I'm going to need the distance AB. How am I going to get the distance AB? I can easily calculate that by just using the sine of 25 equals 7 opposite over AB. By cross multiplying, I can discover that AB is equal to 7 over sine 25. What is 7 divided by the sine of 25? 16,56 meters. So AB is 16,56 meters. So this whole length here is 16,56. Okay. Now, I can work out the work done by the gravitational force. Remember we said, be careful of confusing the thetas that are involved in the formulas. So, let's work out the force first, and then we, work, we, we put into that formula. The force is the FG parallel, right? To work out the work done by gravity, all right? So we're gonna say FG parallel is fg times sine of theta we know that fg is the same as mg so it's 15 times 9 comma 8 times the sine of 25 degrees so this gives me a force of 62,12 Newtons. Okay, so Fg parallel is 62,12 Newtons. Okay, so now I can work out the work done by the force of gravity. Okay. It's going to be 62, 62,12 times 16,56 times the cos of 0. Cos of 0 is going to be 1. And I'm going to get an answer of... Just need to quickly grab a calculator and I'm going to get an answer of... If I say 62,12 times 16,56, I get an answer of 1,028,70. One thousand and twenty-eight comma seven O or rather seven one joules if you round off to two decimal places. So the work done by gravity is that amount. Okay. The work done by the normal force, hmm, it's acting perpendicular to the direction of motion. Work done by FG perpendicular. Also, it's also acting perpendicular to the direction of motion. These two forces do zero work. Okay? So because they do zero work, the 
only two forces that do non-zero work are FG parallel and the frictional force. So now let's work out the work. Let's work out the. Um, let's write down an expression for the total work done. So work total must be equal to work done by gravity plus work done by friction. We already know what the work done by gravity is. We know what the work total is. We can work out the work done by friction. So 606,72 is equal to 1028,71 plus the work done by friction. So if we subtract 1028,71 from both sides of the equation, we remain with 421,99 joules and negative 421,99 joules is equal to the work done by frictional force. Now that we know the work done by the frictional force, we can now easily calculate the frictional force. Okay, so the last point is now just to, the last step is now to use the work formula and calculate the frictional force from there. So, I'm just gonna say W is equal to F delta X times the cos of theta negative 421,99 is equal to F times 16,56 times the cos of 180. Okay. We need to divide both sides by 16,56 times cos of 180. What we end up with we get 25,48. So the frictional force 25,48 newtons. If you had you calculated the work done by gravity by considering the vertical height, you'd probably get a slightly different answer. Okay? But that is acceptable within the marking of this question. Alright guys, that's how you can attempt uh, questions involving work done by the gravitational force on an inclined plane. Okay? Uh, thanks for watching. In the next episode where we talk about work, energy and power, we're going to start talking about energy principles and how they relate to work done. Thanks for watching. See you guys around next time.